Welcome everybody to our first Tech Talk. My name is Derek, this is Chris and Phil. The voice behind the scenes you might hear is Nick. Uh, this is our first attempt at this. What we're gonna do is discuss some of the things that we've come across in our years in the industry. Just some general motorcycle chit chat. Uh, I've known these guys a long time. Between the three of us, we got over 40 years experience in the industry. Today we're gonna tell you a little bit about ourselves just so you know who we are, so you'll know if we're full of it or not. Uh, please feel free to comment. We will respond to comments in hopefully future episodes. Happy to answer any questions or reply to any comments you may have. A uh, little bit about me. I started riding when I was about 18 years old, which was 1900 or something like that. Uh, I was a little older when I started. Luckily, my father got behind me and, and let me do that. Uh, got a GS500 Suzuki I learned to ride on. Lived on sport bikes through the 90s. Didn't find Harley till the early 2000s and decided about, oh, I don't know, 16 years ago to make a career out of it. Uh, that's when I met these guys, Chris, right after the time I got in, Phil shortly thereafter, and we've been kind of working on and off together ever since then. But even though we've known each other a long time and we've had a lot of different conversations, I don't know their background on motorcycling other than until we hit the Harley world. So Chris and Phil, fill me in on how you started riding motorcycles. Well, I'll go. I uh, started riding dirt bikes, little mini trail 50 when I was about four years old, I'm guessing. I uh, rode dirt bikes all through my teenage years, four wheelers out at the, the family property. And then when I was about 16 or 17, my father told me, you cannot own a motorcycle while you live under my roof. Oh, really? Yes. He so I promptly, when I was 18, moved out and uh well were you a terror on the bikes that he said no that, they just didn't it... like motorcycles yeah my parents didn't like motorcycles yeah. either you know and it's weird because my dad was a car guy he didn't mind hot rod stuff but the motorcycles just never did but... yeah no my dad I, I guess i probably was a terror at the farm farm <laughs> i flipped go-karts and I, I i did some stuff probably that i shouldn't have yeah, that makes sense but so i moved out for a year or so when I was 18, moved back in for a few months between like my friend's lease being up and I was moving in with them. They came home from the property one weekend and there was a motorcycle, my Kawasaki 454 LTD. 454. Oh, the 454. Yes, lovely bike as a first bike, sitting in the corner of the garage. They goes, that's nothing I can do now. <laughs> now, I would assume Phil is like a long time rider forever. I would no, go with that. Since he was a child. No, definitely not. Didn't get into motorcycles till I was about 20 years old. Uh, kind of lived under poverty, so just didn't have money for it, and bought my first Honda Rebel, little rat bike. Oh man, was it was the two fifty? No, it's a five hundred. That was a five hundred. Oh, five hundred. Well, you're, you're, you're a sizable guy. So. Si yeah, I'm a pretty big dude. So uh, bought that at twenty years old, never looked back. Uh, joined the military, got into Harley's. In 2012. Oh, just get over with tell them what branch you were in. So no. <laughs> I was in the Navy. Of there course. Navy. Big for and, motorcycling. Oh, yeah. Um, but bought my first bike, my first Harley, brand new, 2012 Road Glide, uh, flat black. The one you had when you got here. Yep. That was your first yep, Harley. That was my first Harley. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Yep, first Harley. And then since then, it's been nothing but Harleys. I've gone from 2012 Rogue Glide, 2014 Fat Bob, and then I started getting to the older bikes. Uh, bought my first shovel head. It was 1978. Turned <laughs> that into a chopper. Better you than me, man. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of work. Man. And then uh, 81, I, just, I could keep going and going. Now, I, now, how many of those old, old bikes you currently still have are, are in a running condition right now? Um... Out of the six bikes I own, I have probably four, four that are running right four. now. I, four. I think you're exaggerating. Really? Are you not exaggerating? Aren't no, there a I couple know, floating I know, I know of pieces? two. No, I got my, let's see, the 81. Does oh, it yeah. run? So the old bikes, yeah, just one. Really? Yeah, but okay. out of my six bikes. Okay. All right, fair enough. So fair enough. We just see the two then, I guess. Yes. But I, I do believe that having all kinds of, all different styles of riding super important when you're a motorcycle guy. I agree with that. I think just riding is fun in general. 
I've never been the type to say one bike is necessarily better than another bike. It's yeah, just the riding experience because I can have fun on about anything with two wheels. And now even three wheels, I'm getting used yeah, to that. Yeah. I don't have a trike yet, but you never know. It's you, becoming popular. It may become unpopular in the Harley world, but yes, I love my sport bikes. YZFs and Ninjas and CBRs, I had them all. I had them all. I didn't I, go I didn't go Italian. It was the only way I, I was the Italian it. guy. I got the my, Ducatis, the Italian Harley. Yes, that 90 degree V-Twin. That was a fun bike. I had a few of those. Yeah. I missed my ducks a little bit, but I got into Harley. Actually, we were on vacation and I rented one with the wife and we took it for a ride and we both realized at the end of the ride, we were like still really comfortable. <laughs> and we thought, wow, I didn't know you could do this on a motorcycle. Yeah. And that was it. And then changed careers into this. And my first was that 04 Dyna Sport, which is still, I think, my favorite Harley I own. I oh, love good, that yeah. bike. I miss, yeah. I do miss that bike. I can't believe you ever got rid of it. I know. I thought that well, was your you know, as a nostalgia thing. Uh, well, no, not, not that. It was, uh, I got a different bike from someone else that I had to keep, and I couldn't have two sentimental bikes. So, uh, but uh, now Harley World, I've got my 2000 Fat Boy, which is under a cover in the garage. And then. Uh, What's it painted like? Uh, it'd be a uh, yellow and black in the form of a Pittsburgh Steeler for like some blue reason. And re it's blue not and red paint it's, it's yeah, Steelers yeah, bike. It's okay, very much checking. Steelers bike. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Cowboys fans. You know Doesn't here. mean I'm a Steelers fan, but the previous owner was, and that's just how it is. Um, but uh, you know, curiosity. Uh, what bike are you riding currently, Phil? Oh, currently my daily. Yeah, what's your daily? My daily is a 22 Pan America. Pan America. Who makes the Pan America? Oh, my God, best Harley. But it is a Harley Davidson. Huh. Yep. Interesting, Chris. What 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 bike are you currently I, uh, daily riding? I happen to ride a. Uh, it looks similar to Phil's. It was also twenty two Pan America. A twenty two Pan that. America. Yes, I know. Shocking. I am shocked. And wow. It is the most fun Harley I've ever ridden in my entire life. Wow, it's a Pan America commercial over here. It is the quickest, the fastest, versatile. I mean, versatile. Mm. It Derek, is a wheelie machine out of the box. Derek, what are you, what are you riding recently? Daily. Daily right now? Yeah. Uh, I believe mine is a 22 Pan America. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so welcome to the Pan Bro Show. Oh, just out of curiosity, uh, the voice in the background, uh, Nick, the producer, what's your daily rider at the moment? They have to be a 22 Pan America. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm not saying there's a theme here, folks, but there's a bit of a theme here. I uh, do miss my... Uh, Oh, one fat boy though. That's so you can ride my 2000 whenever you feel the need. If you know, we, we love all Harley. Uh, some people will be crazy or think I'm crazy. Cause I, I, uh, I was on my Harley live wire, my electric bike, which I do love. And some of you may think I'm still riding that, but I did actually trade it in for the Pan America. Uh, I like the latest, greatest from Harley. I like to see what's going on. I know, Phil, you like the old bikes, and you bring them back to life. I've seen this man kickstart bikes that shouldn't be able to kickstart, which, no. good on him. But I in. like pushing buttons and having the technology to get me down I mean, the road. Like I said, all styles of riding. I mean, currently in my garage that I ride daily are obviously my 22 Pan America because it's fast, it's quick. And then I have a 2011 Fat Boy, mm. and then I have my 81 Shovelhead, 78 Chopper, and that's about it. <laughs> right now, that are currently running in my garage. I haven't seen the Chopper come around no, much. No, it hasn't come around much. You know, titling and or uh, insurance and uh, uh, making you, it road you legal. Got, you got to get it legal. Yeah. Okay. So going back to, uh, so we, had, we know our first bikes. They were all fairly small. You graduated a sport bike, 600 cc most likely. Uh, or 600 and 750. Okay, I was I, I was 600 I guy. 1, no. I was always 600 guy. What was after your 500? Oh, you had Davidson. you rode that. That was I your rode, first bike, I first rode, like street. You, legal bike. you rode that I mean, Rebel the whole time. Yeah, two years. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. Well, no, if you got the 2012, the Rebel was in. You were how old? I was 20 years old. What year was that? Well, I guess I want to give away your age, but you're younger than I always remember. So I joined so. the military when I was 20. That's right. The military so time ate you two up. Two years after that, and then two years after that, <laughs> bought my 2012 Real Glide. I gotcha. That makes sense. I, I, I understand now. So uh, what I've learned, and you guys can chime in on this as well, on the maintenance on these bikes. I, uh, when I was younger with my first bikes, I didn't maintain them. At all. What is maintenance? I what was terrible what with is those bikes. Didn't really know what chain adjustments were. I'd change oil every once in a while because I thought you were supposed to, but didn't do anything else these bikes. Uh, what, in your opinion, 
do you find is the uh, most common neglected thing on the bikes? From tire the pressure. Coming? You didn't let me finish. Nope. But <laughs> tire pressure. Don't need. <laughs> known you too long. Tire pressure. <laughs> well, that's that's what I would say is tire <laughs> pressure. Are you agreeing with tire I am pressure? Agreeing with tire do pressure. you agree I, with tire I pressure? Don't. You I, don't. I, wow. Okay. We have. With, oh, uh, a controversial so, talk. Uh, what I would have to say is most neglected is your clutch adjustment. I had I really working in the back. There's so many times I come across burnt clutch plates or your clutch cables out of adjustment. And, and those, that's one thing you've got to check all the time. That's, that's a easy fix for an expensive fix. I, I get, but tires are not cheap. No, tires aren't cheap, but you, you're right. Tires aren't cheap, but people will ride those until, they're more worried about tread. States all only worried about tread depth. Well, that's why I always see tire pressure because I'm yes. like, they come in and they're running at 10 psi. And, uh, and while they come in, oh, my bike feels funny. And it does make it feel funny. But they don't check the tire pressure. Or new bikes, tire pressure monitoring light comes on. Oh, man. That, they come to the shop. Don't even get me started on tire pressure. I have pressure a light monitors. on. Well, it's shaped like a tire. You know what you should do? Check your tire pressure. Same thing you do in your car. What check are you doing when the little fuel light's on? I add gas. What? I know. Shocking. Uh, Unbelievable. They, they are changes. Uh-oh. Back here. Phil's already breaking, breaking the set. Displays. Not nice, Phil. Mm -hmm. Sherry's going to be very upset with you. She will. <laughs> but yes. It tomorrow. So, of course, we always check our tire pressures uh, during our services. We get a lot of questions about maintenance. Um, that's one thing. One of the reasons we want to talk about this is because we get a lot of the same questions over and over again, and we're always happy to answer those questions. Uh, we're seven days a week shop. One of us are always here through the week. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I meant Sunday, Monday, Phil. Phil, Phil is, yeah. So there's always someone here to answer those questions, but we we do you know want to put it out there that some of these questions can be answered regularly. And another one we get often is, hey, man, I need an oil change. Great, but. An oil change is just your engine. And I know it like Jiffy Lube for your car, they'll dump the oil, maybe check a couple things, and boom, they got you rolling. Uh, Harleys and motorcycles in general is a little different with some of the things that you should do to these bikes for adjustments. I would think you would agree. You only have two wheels, not four. So if you lose one, it's a problem. Right. Car, you lose one, not as big of a problem, but and, still a problem. And honestly, I didn't realize how critical those things were until I went to Motorcycle Mechanics Institute, which you guys also did because all the techs here went through that program yep. to become technicians and all of our training. Uh, the K services that we do are way more robust than just an oil change. Um, we're checking critical fasteners. We're checking a lot of adjustments. We're updating software on the new bikes. Checking torque specs. We're because I don't know how you guys feel about it, but these bikes are rolling computers nowadays. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And how many times do we fix these rolling computer issues by doing the good old fashioned turn it off, turn it back on? It's like a modem on your computer. If you're having issues and you call the IT specialist with Comcast or whoever you got because you got internet connectivity, what's the first thing they have you do? Unplug it for 30 seconds or a minute, <laughs> plug it back in. You would be shocked how many times you fix a Harley Davidson check engine light and or something else by doing that. Three or four guys who own the newest, greatest, latest Harley Davidson that is a rolling computer. It never throws codes though, does it? Oh, I mean, it has. They're Nick, <laughs> does yours ever throw codes? No. no you're, you're all good. As Nick's current technician, <laughs> <laughs> Nick is really good at throwing codes. And despite, I, I have a special technique. But you have, can't. You but done, then, Nick does have a special but technique. Then can't, we can't man. duplicate. Poor Phil can't duplicate the codes. That's I the think problem. Nick is purposely throwing that code because he really likes hanging out. Well, with the you. real trick is just eight thousand RPM. Just the clutch. Wind it out. Cold Dump start. It. Yeah. Just <laughs> start it up. Yep. Warm-ups are for suckers. Still under warranty. <laughs> Another good thing with, you know, the oil changes versus K services is that it's just the stuff you don't think of that are super important when you're coming with motorcycles. And, I mean, not only are the oil changes, but, I mean, we're adjusting your clutch, like I said. Well, you like that clutch, don't I do you? like that clutch. We're adjusting your <laughs> throttle idle cables if you have them. Um, all the adjustments are super important. Brake pads, big one. People don't check brake pads. Go to metal to metal, it becomes an issue. What's the, uh, so when I was younger, I was riding my CBR 600 after I'd done no maintenance at all. And I was riding down the freeway 
and I got a loud bang on the back and pulled over the side to scare the crap of me and the adjuster nut on the rear uh, swing arm was loose and come up and spun into the sprocket and banged. Scared the crap out of me. N nothing major, something minor, but scared me. And we're not talking accidents, anything so like that, but just little things you've been riding. What oh, no, have you I experienced was, I was that just made a you moron. nervous? <laughs> I had uh, a YZF 600. Yeah. I owned it for six months. I was riding out to, uh, I was going to bail hay for my family. I don't uh, know where about, that is. About the family farm. Anyway. Driving a road I've known my entire life, there was a five mile stretch of brand new highway. Mm. Me and my four friends, they're on cruisers, I'm on a sport bike. We, I've been driving this road my whole life, hit the turn, I wave, and third gear, pop a wheelie, and I'm gone. About 135, I decide I probably should slow down. I had done no maintenance, <laughs> didn't change the oil, lube the cable, lube the belt, your, your uh, chain, chain, Harley World 2 on. Um, <laughs> nothing. And uh, yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, I'm a moron. And then years later, I totaled a ninja. So yeah, that, broke a collarbone. You know, it is what. Well, it see, is. we're not talking about that. That can happen. <laughs> I get it. That wasn't my fault. You, it never it is. Never is. Have you ever had a scary moment on your bike, Phil? Oh man, all the time. <laughs> um, I, I know live, one of your live, scary. We bike live in stores. San Antonio. Riding motorcycles always scary here. So I mean, I'm <laughs> Chopper World. So Chopper, Bobber, Rat Rod, and Scary Time. All the time, no front brakes. You know, <laughs> with the uh, the Honda Rebel, never changed the oil. I just kept adding to it. Nice. Yeah. You know, Continuous uh, loss system. You know, never, <laughs> yeah. Never uh, adjusted the chain or anything like that. So I had a broken chain on that. Um, on Ugh. the seven. While you were riding. While I was riding. Oh, that's always walked fun. Walked up the rear wheel. That was a fun time. Um, luckily, I came out unscathed. Good. Um, the uh, 78 chopper just built it, you know, lost uh, no front brakes, <laughs> foot clutch, oh, shift. I do remember that, yeah. Uh, lost my rear brake, so that was that was fun coming down 281. <laughs> you know, when you do these swap meet builds, it's kind of what happens, man. <laughs> it's why it's important to check torques. I agree, and that's why, uh, I'm really happy with my new modern stuff <laughs> because, you know, I think back to even the, you know, my, my 04, which was started life as a twin cam 88 and it, it grew into other displacements and power over the years, but what it took to make that power later that the new bikes now make out of the box, it's kind of ridiculous. And so when I'm riding the new bike, I get spoiled because I climb back onto an older bike and think, wow, what is wrong with this bike? Cause it just won't get out of its own oh, way. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, with the, uh, the 2011 Fat Bob that the 2011 uh, Fat Boy that I just purchased. Um, the, between that, riding the newer bikes here on test rides, and then my Pan America, when I switch back and forth, I just hop on that Fat Boy, and I'm like, where, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> I have the same problem when I get back on my 03. 03 Softail Springer. Yeah, and but it's a Springer. That's got so many other problems it with so it. It is so good, it, man. Yeah. Have you seen it? It looks so it, nice. I, I mean, the Springer doesn't do anything it's for horrible. me. I know, it's a beautiful it, bike. Don't get me wrong. It's a beautiful bike. Horrible. It's a Springer it Softail, cool. which is the ultimate version of have look how cool it looks. you seen the back looks. of my calf? And it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I think we're about to wrap it up. Um, oh, okay. You, 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 no, man. Well, we got about one more minute left. And, uh, oh, our, our producer's giving us a sign. Yeah. Oh, okay. We well, have, We haven't learned his signs yet. So, so <laughs> yeah, we don't know. This is we're winging it for right now. But just want to remind you guys, if you have comments, you have questions, we will be answering those. We'd love to answer any of the stuff you guys got for us. And take Absolutely. your suggestions. Uh, and talk motorcycles in general, Harley specifically. Uh, hopefully we can fill you in on a little bit of things we see here at Caliente. And... Uh, Hopefully see you in the shop as well. Come Show on topics. in. And, yeah. Bring them up. We and, love, and, love, love ideas. And come on in and talk to us. But uh, thanks for checking us out, and we'll see you soon. Absolutely. See you on the road. See you later.